Shalom. Welcome to Pathfinders International Messianic Ministry. I'm your host and teacher, Brother Scott Norris, uh, with you once again teaching the law of Christ so that we may gain a great deeper understanding and knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. And I am in a series um, dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, I want people to have a good understanding of this. Paul did too, because he said it over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be unaware, or I don't want you to be ignorant or misinformed. And so a lot of times I've, I've, you know, over the years I've studied various teachings about the gifts of the Spirit, and I've seen some some teaching that's not so great, right? You know, um, for one, uh, the get there there are basically three classifications of gifts that Paul writes about in Scripture. He talks about um, uh, the ministry gifts of preaching, which are the, uh, what some people refer to as the fivefold ministry gifts mentioned over in Ephesians chapter four, where he talks about apostles, prophets, evangelists pastors, and teachers. And those are gifts that, uh, to be quite frankly, are not as commonly found in the body of Christ. But uh, those are individuals who are called to preach. And if you're called to preach, you're called into one of those uh, classifications of preaching, of, of what some refer to as the five-fold ministry. And then when you study Romans chapter 12, Paul talks about what I like to refer to as functional gifts, okay? So he talks about the prophetic individual. He talks about those given to teaching, let them teach. Um, and that's, you know, not necessarily the same uh, authority as a fivefold ministry teacher, but people who are researchers, students of the word, who like to teach and share knowledge and information from scripture. Then he talks about, uh, you know, if you're an exhorter, um, give yourself over to exhortation. If you show mercy, you know, you're gifted at showing mercy and compassion, if you're uh, gifted at sharing or giving, if you are gifted in an area of leadership, you know, and, and, and then he talks about those gifted in the areas of practical service. Um, you know, those are what I call functional gifts. You know, those are giftings that people throughout the body of Christ and any given church possess, right? That's how you function. And usually within your functional giftings, um, people uh, can be, you can kind of see there's some traits and characteristics, and usually those gifts kind of carry through and shine through in different ways, even in your secular vocations as well, you know. And maybe one day I'll teach on those gifts, those, the, the fivefold ministry gifts and the, um, fun, the gifts of function, right? But the gifts of the Holy Spirit are another set of gifts that Paul talks about. These are gifts specifically that are um, uh, moved by the will of the Spirit, sovereignly through his will, but we're taught to desire them too. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, Paul writes and says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts or passionately desire spiritual gifts, right? So gifts, the gifts of the Spirit are something that we should pursue. Paul, uh, Yeshua in teaching about prayer talks about, you know, um, uh, if your father, if you being a father, would you give, if your child asked for some bread, would you give him a stone? And he says, of course not. You being an evil know how to get, uh, give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? Right? And so, I believe in that. He's teaching us about those. When we get born again, yes, Yeshua breathed into his disciples, right? The word spirit in Greek and in Hebrew means breath. It can also mean wind, right? So when we get born again, yes, the Lord breathes into our spirit to regenerate our spirit. But then Yeshua told his disciples that, you know, they weren't to start fulfilling the Great Commission until they're filled with power from the Holy Spirit on another dimension, another level, another grace level of power in the Holy Spirit, right? Where now you begin to read in Acts about how the Spirit of God 
fills the disciples. Okay, so Yeshua had already breathed into them the Holy Spirit, but then you see this other fresh and filling, and they begin to speak supernaturally with tongues unknown to them, right? But I also believe that, you know, so Yeshua is teaching how to pray and seek and receive the Holy Spirit, but he's also um, teaching us, I believe, how to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know? And so to be used of God, you have to desire to be used of God. If you want to be used of God powerfully, you got to desire it. And as I've been reiterating throughout uh, this series, I believe the Lord not only wants a bride who is righteous and pure and blameless and walks in love, but he also wants that same bride to be gifted, to be graced by God. Grace, um, I know I'm giving it before I get into this segment, grace um, in the Greek is the word charis, okay? And it comes from an ancient Greek terminology. Uh, actually, it was a secular terminology before it found its way in the Bible. Grace to the ancient Greeks was their way of describing when their one of their gods gave a human being a supernatural endowment to, to have so many abilities of that particular God, right? So when we talk about grace in the kingdom of heaven, Okay, there's grace for salvation. You're saying that you've been touched by Yeshua. You've been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. And not only touch, but there's been an endowment. There's been some attributes of his divine nature that's now been imputed unto you to give you his abilities. That's why Yeshua said, you shall do greater works than these. For those who believe, believe on me, those who believe on me shall do greater works, right? Because he's gracing us, he's touched us, he's endowed, endowed us with dimensions of his power and authority so that we could be his ambassadors in the earth. Now, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit in particular that Paul writes about, there are nine gifts of the Spirit and there are three classifications of those gifts, the gifts of revelation, the gifts of power, and the gifts of divine utterance. And right now, we're going through the gifts of power. The previous um, segment, I covered the supernatural gift of faith, right? And I taught how that gift of faith is not the faith for salvation, nor is it the kind of faith that develops uh, in the fruit of the Spirit. As you walk in the Spirit, as you feed your inner man, as you grow in knowledge and growing grace of Yeshua, where you can develop your faith. This type of faith is a faith to do supernatural things, a faith that a mountain moving faith, that when you speak, it's almost as if it's the, uh, the same power and authority as if Christ himself is speaking to a situation or a challenge to cause supernatural things to happen, okay? And so now we're gonna deal with the gifts of healing, and it's the gifts, plural, of healing, right? And we don't understand, it's kind of a mystery, why is it in Scripture written down to us, the gifts, plural, of healing? Um, he says what? 1 Corinthians 12 and 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And so um, I, I believe the reason why he gives it plur plurality is because there are different types of healings. There's spiritual healing, there's emotional healing, and there's physical healing. But this is listed, classified, as one of the power gifts. Because like faith, healing can really show his power on display, right? Um, the Greek word for healing is iama, meaning cure all right, or to cure. Uh, the gifts of healing is the supernatural ability to minister healing through the power of God. And one minister says this, he says, it's the power of God to destroy the works of the devil 
within the physical body. The power of God to destroy the works of the devil in the physical body. Okay. Um, as I stated before, not all healing is physical. There is mental, spiritual, and emotional healing that also happens. God does heal and touch these areas as well. Um, so some healings too, and you'll notice this in scripture, are instantaneous and some are gradual, right? Um, medicine, whether it's natural or conventional, is not to be mistaken as the gift of healing. And there are people, as I stated, when I, when I, you know, I've done my studies on the gifts of the spirit, there are some people that don't really understand the supernatural aspects of the kingdom of heaven. And they'll say, well, the gifts, gifts of healing is someone, a believer who's called to be a physician or a nurse. That is not the gift, the gifts of healing. Now, don't get me wrong. We need doctors. We need physicians. We need nurses. You know what I mean? Um, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, physicians are good. They can help us out even with preventative care or emergency care or critical care, right? But those aren't the gifts of healing, right? We're talking about a supernatural power from the Holy Spirit through a vessel yielded to the Holy Spirit to bring about healing, okay? So this isn't um, uh, doctors without borders. This isn't Christian missionaries who serve in the area of medicine. And we should have people who, who serve in the area of medicine. I thank God for people who are researchers and scientists who study disease and how to tackle them, so on and so forth. But we're talking about supernatural healing, right? The gifts of healing, a uh, God does, does inspire people to find remedies, surgeries, medicines, and, pr and procedures to help people dealing with physical ailments, right? But that is not this gift, all right? Even people that deal with psychological disorders and so forth, you know, God can inspire people to deal with that, but, th but, but this is not the gifts of healing. This is not the gifts of healing, right? Because even further down in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, Paul mentions God gave first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, he mentions miracles and healings, basically miracle workers, healing workers. And I believe Paul later on got the revelation that those are evangelists in Ephesians chapter four, right? Because typically in the ministry of an evangelist, you'll see a lot of miracles, a lot of healings taking place, right? But you don't have to be a preacher per se um, to be used effectively by God in the gifts of healing. Remember I said, pursue God, desire spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 14. So any one of us, any believer can be used in any of these nine gifts of the spirit, especially as you walk in the spirit being full of the Spirit. I talked about that a bit, a bit the last segment, right? Um, a big part of Jesus or of Yeshua's ministry is healing. When you read the Gospels, you, you read a lot about healings that take place. I mean, that's one of the main displays of God's power that we see in his ministry is that of healing. You know, Isaiah 53 and 4 um, writes, hold on. Yet he himself bore our sickness and he carried our pains, but we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted, right? So this is a prophesying Isaiah about the healing ministry of Yeshua. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. He, he wants to bear our sickness and carry our pain. He wants to take it from us, right? He wants to heal people and he still heals people today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When the evening had come, they brought unto him many who were possessed with devils 
and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all who were sick. He healed all who were sick. He can heal all who are sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, I just read it to you, who said, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Mark 132 through 34. When, e when evening came, after the sun had set, they brought to him all those who were sick and demon-possessed. The whole town was assembled at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Large and measurable crowds gathered around Yeshua because of his ability through the Holy Spirit to heal. And that's what we got to keep in mind. He didn't heal simply because he's the son of God. He healed as a prophet anointed by the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? He fashioned himself in the likeness of man, right? Divinity now becomes a part of humanity. And he demonstrates to us that you know, what, why his ministry was so anointed was he was anointed with the power of the Ruach HaKodesh or of the Holy Spirit of God. The wind and breath of God breathed and moved powerfully on his life. And the Spirit of God can move powerfully in our lives and he can use us the same way that Yeshua allowed himself to be used, right? He is our example, And this won large crowds of people. This, this helped to gather in the harvest. Mark 1, through 42, it says, Moved with compassion, Yeshua reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing. This is a man that was sick with leprosy and asked if he was willing to, uh, to cure him. He told him, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. And he was made clean. So this was this this was done immediately. Now, not all healings took place immediately, right? But uh, but we see in some cases they were. Remember, I said these are power gifts, the, the power of God on display, telling him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest, and after what Moses or the Torah commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. All right. And you notice here that Yeshua um, uh, still upholds Moses. He still upholds Torah. He was a Torah teacher himself. He still upholds it till this day, right? Yet he went out and began to proclaim it widely. The man, the man couldn't keep this to himself. You know, the Lord has supernaturally healed him. I mean, it touched him in such a powerful way that he could not help but tell everybody else about Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? No, you know, and, and so this is powerful, right? This is powerful, right? The gifts of the Spirit unlock doors. They unlock regions uh, to reach people so that the gospel may penetrate the earth, so that light may penetrate darkness. And we see an illustration of this as we read through the Scripture. Yet he went out and began to proclaim it widely and to spread the news. He, he, he starts going out evangelizing to spread the good news with the result that Yeshua could no longer enter a town openly, but he was out in a deserted place and they came to him from everywhere. So the healing power and grace drew people to Yeshua. Why? Many people are hurting and there are people today that need healing, Right? And we saw other types of healings, not only of diseases, but of physical handicaps and disabilities. We saw people, you read about in scripture, people who were lame, people who could not speak, people who could not hear, people who were blinded, all being healed by trusting Yeshua, right? He, the gifts of healing flowing through him. Peter proclaimed over in Acts 10.38, 
because Yeshua's ministry of healing was so profound and Peter walked with him. So when he goes to Cornelius' household, he says, how God anointed Yeshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, okay, and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were under the tyranny of the devil because God was with them. And so we learn from that verse that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of healing flowed out of the ministry of Yeshua, that when he taught, when he preached, people got healed. There was constant, people sought him for healing. We can seek him for healing, amen. Glory be to the Most High. Um, and believe that he can do it and trust that he can do it. Mark 3 and 10, uh, since he had healed many, all who had diseases were pressing toward him to touch him. Yeshua's goal was and is, it still is, okay? It was just as it was then and it is, it is now for his disciples those entrusted with this teaching because of their strong desire to learn, that's what a disciple is, is that they would proclaim his kingdom and heal the sick just as he did. Well, how do we know this, right? How do we do know this? It, uh, Luke chapter nine, verses one through two, summoning the 12, he gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. Then he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So it is his desire. Not only, you know, he wasn't, he didn't want to be the only one that could heal people, right? His desire was though that those he would send out to be his ambassadors in the earth to proclaim the gospel of his kingdom, his students his learners, his disciples, that they might have the same power and authority as well to cure disease. And those are the gifts of healing through the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing that he wants for us as his disciples, that we represent him by what? Proclaiming the kingdom of heaven and healing diseases. He wants to, he wants to move powerfully through us through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring healing to people who desperately need it. Matthew chapter 10 also reads, let me turn there. Summoning his 12 disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease and sickness, right? Summoning his 12 disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease and sickness. Now, a lot of people might say, well, Brother Norris, yeah, those are the 12 foundational apostles, you know, those are the apostles of the Lamb, you know, God doesn't move that way anymore. Well, when we read Luke chapter 10, we read that Yeshua also had other disciples, in fact, the 12 were just those that would be with him at all times. But he had more than just 12 disciples because when we get over to the book of Acts, we see 120 people gathered together as disciples praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> and then when we read over in um, Luke chapter 10, we read about 70 other disciples that he had. Luke chapter 10, and after this, the Lord appointed 70 others, other disciples, and he sent them ahead of him in pairs or in twos to every town and place where he himself was about to go. When you enter any town, this is what he tells them, and they welcome you, eat the things set before you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near. And it worked because the 70 came back to him with joy saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. So this isn't just for the 12 original 
apostles, right? He still calls disciples today. He still sends, sends them out. He still sends out ambassadors. He still even calls and commissions apostles today, right? And so we are to be like those apostles, apostolic learners, disciples, students of God's kingdom who are being used powerfully and supernaturally in the earth because of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In Mark 16, uh, 16 he says this, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes. And if they should drink any uh, anything deadly, it will not harm them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So this is what he wants us to to how he wants us to represent him, to represent Christ in the earth. Um, healing like the other gifts, open hearts and new territories for God's kingdom. Acts chapter three, verses 10 through 16. And they recognized them as being the very one who, who, who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg for charitable gifts. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he was clinging to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them at the porch named Solomon's, completely astonished. But when Peter saw this, he replied to the people, men of Israel, why are you amazed at this or why are you staring at us as through by our own power or godliness we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Yeshua, the one who whom you handed over and disowned in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. But put to death the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, a fact of which we are all witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is, in, it is the name of Jesus or Yeshua, which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which comes through him has given him the perfect health and the presence of you all. Amen. Uh, Peter and the other disciples, they corporately sought together in prayer for the gifts of healing. Acts 4, 29 through 31. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand for healing and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Yeshua. When they prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. So they understood the commission. They understood that even when things got tight, we need to get more, we need to go back to God in prayer for more power from the Holy Spirit and for more of his gifts. This one in particular, the gifts of healing to be released, right? Because listen, you can't argue against the power of God. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, a church that's moving that is gifted and moving in power, it's hard to dispute our claim. It's, it's easier to persuade men and to win an argument when we see when what we're preaching about is demonstrated with power and with authority. Amen. So I pray that um, impartation has been made, that you're stirred up, excited about the gifts of the Spirit, that you continue, continue to pursue love and desire the gifts of the Spirit, in the next segment, I'll teach about the third gift, uh, the third power gift, which is the gift of miracles. Until then, shalom.